I'm Andrew Joseph Keith, and in this video, we're going to see if Baba Bell cheese wax will sculpt. Welcome to the first video in the Will It Sculpt series. I'm excited. Let's get into it. Baby Bell cheese is a popular snack food that comes in small wheels dipped in red wax. The wax coating helps to cover and preserve the cheese and prevent it from drying out or growing mold. The wax is made of paraffin and microcrystalline waxes. These are food safe, but not healthy to eat. The wax is also recyclable and biodegradable. If you've ever played with the wax covering on these cheese wheels, you probably realized that it's similar to clay in many ways. Ever since I realized this, I've asked my kids every time we get this cheese to save the shells in a plastic bag. After months of snacking and saving, there's finally enough to experiment with. To make sure that the wax was consistent, I took all of the wax and balled it up and put it in an old pot that I use for these types of projects. I then put it on the stove at medium heat and removed any paper bits that I missed removing beforehand. Once it was liquid, I let it cool down a bit. I then poured it in an old yogurt container. There were some bits of debris at the bottom of the pot that I filtered out so that it wouldn't affect the sculpting. Here you can see how it's setting up in the yogurt container. A small wood armature made of a block of plywood and a couple of nails will work as a support to start to add wax and build up the sculpture. For this sculpture, I'll be doing a male torso study of myself because my physique is basically like a Greek sculpture already. There's sculpting bodies and then there's body sculpting. Both are important. So let's talk about the characteristics of this wax. It's very soft, not like candle wax and even softer than beeswax. A while back, I had purchased some microcrystalline wax and this felt very similar. So I wasn't surprised to learn that microcrystalline wax was one of its main ingredients. Microcrystalline wax is a byproduct of the petroleum refinement process. It's often used for things like makeup or cosmetics. If you haven't already, now might be a good time to like the video and subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it and it helps the channel grow. And comment below what material you'd like to see next in this Will It Sculpt series. For this, I wanted to give a framework for judging sculpting materials in general. So let's look at five elements that might make a good sculpting medium. Number one, plasticity. Does it stretch, bend, and twist? Number two, tackiness. Does it stick? Number three, hardness. Is it hard or soft and under what conditions? Number four, color and tone. How does it look? Number five is moldability and permanence. So can it be made to last? Now that we've got an overview of these judging criteria, let's see how this wax measures up. As far as the plasticity, it's a fairly plastic medium, meaning that it can bend, twist, and stretch, though it doesn't stretch very far before breaking. And like many plasticine clays, it becomes more plastic the warmer it gets. For plasticity, I rate this wax four out of five. In the next category of tackiness, you want your sculpting medium to be sticky enough to stick to itself, but not so sticky that it sticks to all the tools that you're using. This wax is very tacky or sticky, especially when warm. It sticks to metal and tools to the point where it makes texturing this sculpture very difficult, though you can eliminate this tackiness by cooling the clay down. A trick for cooling clay down is to take a can of spray air and then turn it upside down and spray the sculpture with that liquid air, which rapidly cools down the surface of the sculpture. For tackiness, I rate this two out of five. Moving on to firmness. This clay is surprisingly soft and again, you can harden it up a little bit by letting it cool down. If you accidentally left this in a very hot car, your sculpture can melt completely. So watch out for that. As it heats up in my hand, it becomes very soft, but not too soft to work with. And once it cools down to room temperature, then it firms up quite a bit. And I was able to build out sections of clay like this arm without an internal armature giving it support. For the next criteria, the color or the look of the clay, this is a very dramatic deep red. The clay is also somewhat translucent, which I find quite pleasing. The extreme red reminds me of écorché studies that show the body as if the skin were removed. For me personally, I find it too saturated and the color a little bit distracting. The red color does make it seem less dark, though when we turn it black and white, we can see it's actually quite a bit darker than we realize. For some reason, our mind tends to lighten things that are a deep red. One thing that I noticed is that if you work the clay quite a bit, then little tiny air bubbles are introduced and it lightens the colors a little bit. 
I actually like this lighter pink a little bit more than the deep red, but I wouldn't want to have to aerate the entire batch of clay. And I don't like when parts of the clay are different colors or different tones than the rest of the sculpture. And for those reasons, I give this a 2 out of 5 on color or look. And the last judging criteria is moldability or permanence. Can it be made to last? While this wax obviously can't be baked or fired in a kiln because it'll just melt, it can be molded and cast in other materials like plaster, resin, or cement. The mold making process is a little bit complicated, takes a while, but it allows you to get multiple copies of the same sculpture, which is nice. For moldability, I give it a 5 because it's just as moldable as the other professional types of plasticine clay that I have. So what is this Cheese Wax's Will It Sculpt score? Again, on plasticity, it's a 4, tackiness, 2, firmness, 4, color, 2, moldability, 5. So that's 17 out of 25, or 68 out of 100. Anything above a 50 is a yes. So yes, this definitely will sculpt. It's a little bit inconvenient to save all of that cheese wax. So if you want something that's very similar, you can look into microcrystalline wax on your favorite online retailer. I have seen professional sculptors use microcrystalline wax for their gesture studies, but then typically when they move on to doing full-size bronze sculptures, they'll use a water-based clay or a plasticine clay that's oil and wax-based that doesn't dry out. So what is this wax good for? I really like it for gesture studies and if you're okay with the texture that you get when you add clay by hand. But if you're going to do a really refined texture where you're going to be using a lot of tools, then it can be a little bit tricky with this wax. If you're interested in sculpting, I definitely recommend checking out my online sculpting courses. There's a figure sculpting course and a portrait sculpting course. Both of these can be found over at Proco.com. There's links down in the description below. And so if you're interested in learning traditional methods for sculpting people, those will definitely be helpful. All right, stay creative, stay productive, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.